Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. Hallelujah. And the angel said to the women at the tomb, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Join us as we continue our Easter praises and we raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies.
louder. Sing it back. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Redeemer Worship Online on this beautiful Easter Sunday, April 12th, 2020. I am Pastor Steve. It's great to have you here. We are joined together today by our wonderful team of musicians, professional quality musicians, including our director of worship, Mr. Danoy, his wife, Cheryl, Kathy Beniski, and Tim Johnson. Thank you, folks, for being here today and blessing us once again. Behind the microphones, behind the camera, we have our videographer, Dan Past, and Bob Past, our sound technician. Thank you, folks. It's great to have all of you here and all of you listening to us today and watching us uh, as we shelter in place under the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today, our strength verse comes from John chapter 14. It's short. It's powerful. Jesus said, because I live, you too will live. How many times do we ask ourselves, why do people get sick? Why is there war? Why is there pain? Why is there suffering? Why is there death? God never promises to answer any specific questions, but he does give us the ultimate answer, and that answer is the resurrection. One day you and I will be in heaven with Jesus. We will live with him forever. No more mourning, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. That's the importance of Easter. And because we serve a living God, we know that not only our Redeemer family, but all of you out there, all the believers around the world who may be watching and listening to this this morning, we are going to continue moving through our national and international crisis because he lives, we too will live. We serve a living Savior. Amen? Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Three announcements. First, remember the good news that as soon as we're able to return to our beautiful sanctuary for worship that first Sunday back will be our official Easter celebration. You won't miss any of the bells and whistles. Secondly, on our new site, besides watching this video broadcast, of course, you can go there and uh, you can download resources 
You can download a bulletin to help you follow along this service. You can download the happenings, which are the announcements for our church. Plus, you also have the opportunity to continue worshiping the Lord by giving online. Now, many of you are mailing in your offering. That's wonderful. Thank you, God's people, for your convenience. If you'd like, you can go to the uh, upper right-hand corner of our homepage of our website, click on giving, follow the instructions. It's very easy. You all know as a believer that one of our ways we worship the Lord is through our giving. So this is a wonderful way to give, especially during these times of stress. The work of the Lord continues, and thank you for giving generously. If you are a visitor this morning, welcome. Please, please do not feel obligated to give. And finally, you are invited to join me live online next Saturday, April 18th, 10 a.m. for our weekly Zoom Bible study. For those of you who are members, please look for Deaconess, uh, uh, Deaconess Chris Hansen's email, uh, giving you all the instructions. If you are a visitor and would like to Zoom with us, please call the church office and we will give you uh, the information that you need. Okay. Well, once again, happy Easter. Our service of worship continues as we hear the Word of God. The first lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 10 verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Friends in Christ, we stand in the presence of our living God. We are the witnesses who share the message of the risen Christ. Yet, We are sinners filled with fear, unbelief, doubt, and despair. Let us confess our sins in the presence of the living God. Merciful Merciful Father, we we confess confess that that we have set set our minds minds towards the things of death and not not a life life revealed in Jesus Christ. In In our our fear, we we quickly quickly turn turn from you towards towards ourselves. ourselves. Our fear leads us to doubt your promises, harm our neighbor, and neglect your creation. Resurrect us, O God, 
and bring about the new life in ourselves, in your church, and in our world. Through the mercy of your beloved Son, forgive us our sins, and forgive us the new breath of your Spirit. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ proclaims, Do not be afraid. Know that you are washed anew in his rising, and your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and live in the everlasting love of God. Amen. Amen. We continue worshiping as we pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and and the glory, glory forever and ever. Amen. Our worship service continues with our children's message. Kids, come on forward. Those of you who are out watching, get close to your TVs. You're going to be involved in this one as well. Come on up, everybody. Have a seat. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter, girls. You look beautiful this morning. Mommy worked hard, and Mommy's beautiful, too. Hey, you know, I just, <clears throat> just felt kind of a tickle in my throat here. Do you mind if I get some water first before we go on? Okay. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm glad that I have a bottle of water in my bag here. I'll just, I'll just use that here. Oh, no. Oh, look, what is it? It's empty. I, I hate empty things. Things should be full, shouldn't they? Well, you know, it's good news is I, I've got a jug of milk in here. Yeah, let's, let's try some milk, shall we? Oh, yeah. Mm, oh. oh, come on, what's up here? Look. Uh, oh, come on. Well, maybe I got something to eat in here. Oh, who ate all the muffins? Who ate all the muffins? Oh, I remember I ate one yesterday, too. So look at this, another empty thing. I don't like empty things. What if we went out hunting for Easter eggs, and you opened your Easter egg up, and you found what? Nothing. How would you feel? Bad. Yeah. Uh, do you like empty, or do you like full? Full. Yeah, you like full, don't you? And of course... Oh, oh, this is the worst thing you want to have empty right now during this time of crisis. An empty roll of toilet, toilet paper. Okay. Well, you know, full is good. Empty is bad. bad, except on this day. This one day of the year, empty is good. In fact, we want empty. We need empty today. Think about it. The two women who ran to the tomb, they went to finish getting Jesus' body ready for burial, they expected to find the tomb what? Full or empty? They expected to find it full, but there they came, and all of a sudden they found the stone had been rolled away, and an angel was sitting on there, and he said, don't be afraid. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go ahead and look. And they looked. Was the tomb empty or full? It was empty. Was that good or bad? That was good because it meant Christ was risen. You guys... You're doing great. You must be pastor's kids. Yeah. And so the angel said, go and tell. And so the angel told them to go, and the women ran, and they went to tell the disciples. Now, were the disciples happy, or were they afraid? Yeah, they were afraid at first. So the women had to tell them a very good message that you know who was raised from the dead? Jesus? Okay. Now, when the disciples heard the good news, they went from fear to joy, let me ask you a question this morning. Are people afraid today? What are they afraid of? What are you guys afraid of? What kind of fears do you have? Spiders? Okay. 
What else are you afraid of? Darkness. What's that? Darkness. Darkness, sure. We have, uh, we have uh, night lights in our house, don't we? Uh-huh. What else? One more thing. Anything else? The what? The devil? Okay, that's a good one too. Now, a lot of people are afraid today because of this thing called the coronavirus too. So we've got an Easter message of hope that we need to get out to the world. Girls, you and I worked on a project yesterday. Mommy did too. The project is that you're going to tell the world the Easter message. You guys ready to do that? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to each give the girls a poster board. Each poster board has a word on it, and those four words comprise our Easter message, but those four words will be in a scrambled way. And you kids out there, if you're watching, I'm going to give you a few seconds. Once we have these scrambled words here, I want you to see if you can unscramble the words and get the Easter message, okay? Okay, good. Girls, let's stand up. Let's get our boards. Let's give the world our Easter message. There you go, one. Let's go over here. Who's got this one right here? Okay. That one. Who's got this one? Good. And who's got this one? Okay, girls, spread out. Let's show everybody over there. Spread out. Open up. There we go. Nice and big. Hold it up. Let's get Chi-Chi in here too. Over there. Over there. Okay. Can everybody see? Up. There we go. Not lives, fear, Jesus. I'll give you a few seconds out there. What's the message? You got it? I hear somebody. Somebody in Plymouth. You got it. Good. Why is that a? Yes, I think that's a Brinkman's. Who else? Yeah, the crumbs. You got it. Are you ready? Girls, let's do it. Give them the Easter message. Here we go. Okay, girls, let's say it together. Fear not, Jesus lives. Everybody, fear not, Jesus lives. One more time. Fear not, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. That's the resurrection message. He died. We're forgiven. He rose. We're going to live forever. Don't be afraid because Jesus is alive. Girls, are you ready to pray? Let's pray, Lord, we thank you. Fear not, Jesus lives. Those are so important words. It doesn't have to be a long message. Help us not to be afraid, Lord, not to be afraid to believe and trust. And help us, Lord, not to be afraid to share. Everybody needs this. We're all afraid of something. Jesus, you died, you rose. You're the living one. You live forever. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Girls, thank you so much. Why don't you give me those? Good job. There we go. Thank you. We continue to worship the Lord with the taking of our offering. There is only one that's worthy of our praises this Easter day. This song is a series of questions. I want you to join us and sing on the answers to our questions. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you the shadows deepen we do but do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through we do do you wish that you could see it all made new we do is all creation
is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus our Messiah? Jesus, many religious leaders have come and gone, been born, lived, and died, but only one has risen from the dead. Jesus, you alone are worthy. We praise you. You alone are worthy to open the scrolls. You alone are worthy one day to open our graves. Because you live, we too shall live. Help us to find that strength and that courage, and may that joy overcome our fear today as we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, good morning, everybody. Like our gospel reading this morning from the book of Matthew, my sermon message is divided into four parts. Remember these four words, and you will remember this Easter message for the rest of your life. Here we go. Fear, facts, faith, and feet. All right, everybody, let's say that together. Fear, facts, faith, and Feet. Very good. Good. I heard you out there. Let's start. Fear. Over the past few weeks, scientists all around the world have detected a rare phenomenon. Seismic silence. They're telling us that because of the absence of vibrations generated by cars, trains, buses, and people going about their daily business, the earth's upper crust is moving, shaking, slightly less than normal because of the world leaders' stay-at-home orders because of the virus. People are staying home. We're staying safe. But we're also staying home because we're afraid. A professor of epidemiology at New York University wrote these words recently. He said, if political leaders are to contend with the disease sweeping the world, they must understand that it only looks like one contagion. In reality, it is two. One of them is the novel coronavirus, a new pathogen. The second contagion is ancient, more intractable, more contagious, human fear. The pandemic of fear. And not just from a virus 
Our world had plenty of fear before this thing came along, amen? Yeah, we, we, we humans are fearful creatures. It's the reason God encourages us in his word with these two words, fear not, 365 times in the Bible, one for every day of the year. Folks, God does not intend for you, for me, for anybody to obsess, worry over things like a virus or anything else. For me, these past few days, it's been puppy potty training. That's high anxiety. God wants to trust him. He wants us to know that we will get through this. Then, oh, what a day it will be when those seismometers start jumping again because the world is shaken with cars, trains, buses, and people out and about. It'll mean we've kicked the virus. Reminds me of my favorite Beach Boys song, Good Vibrations. You're singing that right now in your mind, I know, because I am too. Fear, facts, good vibrations. That fact is the reason for our Easter joy and our power over fear. Why? Let's listen. On Easter Sunday morning, a good vibration struck the tomb of Jesus. Matthew chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Fear, fear gripped the followers of Jesus after his death. They were sheltering in place, hiding for fear of their own lives. An eerie spiritual seismic silence covered the land until the moment the earth shook and the heavenly creature rolled the stone away. The guards shuddered in fear. The women hurried away. The Bible says afraid, yet filled with joy. How? How was that? Because they listened to the facts. Don't be afraid, said the angel. He has risen. He is not here. Come and see the place where he was laid. Then go and tell. The women looked. They saw. They ran filled. Filled with the joy of the fact that the tomb was empty. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. The women knew, but how do we know? Let's look at the facts. Jesus was buried in Jerusalem. So what, preacher? What good does that fact help? Well, think about it. Think about it. Think about where Christianity started. Jerusalem. The disciples went out and preached the message of the risen Christ in the very city where Jesus was publicly crucified and buried. It would have been so easy to crush this movement of rogue fishermen by just going to Jesus' tomb, pulling out the body and exposing the followers of Jesus as a pack of liars. Both the Romans and the Jews were fed up with this group of Jesus followers. Why not just produce the body and put an end to this hoax? Simple. They couldn't. They never found the body. No one ever has. We know why. The Apostle Peter penned these amazing words. He said, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter, Peter, the one who denied Jesus. Peter, the one who saw Jesus alive. Peter, the one who repented. Peter, the one who became one of the greatest disciples and witnesses of Jesus in the history of the world. That, Peter, penned those amazing words. Eleven of the twelve disciples, including Peter, were martyred, executed, because they saw Jesus alive, they preached the risen Christ, and they refused to be silent. They knew two things. First, that Jesus lives, and they understood the promise of Jesus. Very simple, very short. It's our power verse for today. Because I live, you too will live. 
Seven life-changing Jesus words to remember. Folks, do not be afraid. Believe the facts. Live forever. Fear, fact, faith. My 95-year-old mom, God bless her, is doing well. But on her shelf, in her room, is her burial urn. My brother Ken, a potter, made it for her years ago. Mom will be cremated one day. Her ashes will fill that urn. She knows it. She doesn't hide it. It's out in the open for all of us to see. Just like her faith. That urn, you see, that's her witness urn. My mother's joy overcomes her fear. She loves Jesus. She knows Jesus came to give her life. She also knows that to do that, Jesus had to give up his own. After all, there is another virus. This one, always fatal, infecting every human being on earth. Sin, the great sickness that only Jesus could conquer. And he did that with another good vibration. This one on Good Friday. Consider this. At 9 a.m., the very moment that the first lamb was killed in the daily sacrifice at the temple, the lamb of God was crucified. What an amazing coincidence. And then, at 3 p.m., the very moment of the second daily sacrifice of the lamb, Jesus died. What an amazing coincidence. At that moment, Scripture says, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open. And the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. Folks, the resurrection earthquake is the aftershock of Good Friday. The cross and the empty tomb, both part of the same seismic event. Jesus, Lamb of God, died for the sins of the world. The earth shakes. Father accepts his sacrifice by raising his son from the dead. The earth shakes again, then keeps on shaking with the good vibrations of believers, young and old, climbing out of their caves of fear and getting on with their lives again. Why? Because they know two things, that the cross means forgiveness and the resurrection, the empty tomb means resurrection, life everlasting. Jesus, our living one is with us in whatever circumstance. When Jesus gave the apostle John the vision we now know as the book of Revelation, John was on the island of Patmos, a Roman prison colony for, the Bible says, because of the word, which means he was preaching Christ, and the Romans were, uh, were uh, not accepting of that. At that same time, the church was enduring persecution, and more was to come. People were afraid. They were tempted to give in to their fear. So what does Jesus do in the first part of the revelation? Before all these dark visions come, Jesus gives him the bright vision, the hope, he gives him and us the antidote to our fear. Listen to Jesus' words, John, uh, Roman, uh, Revelation chapter 1. When I saw Jesus, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and hell. One night, many, many years ago, as a young pastor, true story, I had a dream that Jesus came to me, and as he walked closer to me, I knelt down, tears streaming from my face. Jesus came to me, he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, Steve, he said, you need to eat more, you're looking thin. <laughs> you know, I think... I think I like John's vision a lot better, don't you? Think of this. Brothers and sisters, don't be afraid. I died. I rose. I am the living one. 
I have all power to help you in every life challenge. Yes, even to raise you from the dead. And one day I will. So please, fear not. Believe. Fear, facts, faith, feet. A few days ago, Tom Dempsey died at age 73. Tom Dempsey was born without any toes on his right foot and with no fingers on his right hand. But on November 8, 1970, Tom Dempsey kicked the winning field goal with his stubby right foot for the New Orleans Saints in a National Football League game. His 63-yard kick was the longest in the history of the NFL. His record stood for 43 years. Today, Dempsey's right shoe is in the Saints Hall of Fame. It's amazing what you can do, even with a stubby foot, when you have the right motivation. Think of it. What did the women do? The women went to the tomb, thinking the tomb was full. It was empty, filled with fear, yet filled with joy, the Bible says. They used their feet, and they ran to tell the scared disciples. When Peter and John heard the news, their fear overcame, or their joy overcame their fear. They used their feet. They ran to the tomb. They had to look for themselves. Well, soon after that, especially in the day of Pentecost, many believers overcame their fear with their joy. And they began to use their feet. And they went out to shake the world with the good news of the gospel. I know what many of you are thinking this morning. No, not good vibrations. Many of you are thinking, there's no way that I can make a difference for Christ. There's no way that I can shake the world, especially not like other Christians. Look, look at me. I've got all these things wrong. Look at my foot, Lord. I, I can't. I can't go out. It's my foot. Or look at my hand. I can't, Lord. It's my hand. Or Lord, I'm just too shy. Or uh, I'm too young. I'm too old. Lord, I'm just too good looking. I just can't go. And you know what God said? Jesus says to you, he said, when I spoke to the women and I said, fear not, go, I was speaking to you. I was speaking to every believer of every time. Fear not, go and tell. Use whatever means you have, your feet, your hands, your, your, <clears throat> your phone, your social media, your etch a sketch, whatever you got, folks, go and tell. You see, people are afraid. We are living in a pandemic of fear. People are looking for help. You and I have the antidote to their fear. Well, what is that, Pastor? It's simple. Here it is. You and I have been born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's a game changer. Everything changes. We have the living Savior. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the mission. And we are the light to go into a dark world. That, that truth moves us from fear to boldness. It moves us to have urgency for our brothers and sisters who may not yet be believers. And that truth moves us to say one more time, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And Lord, we thank you. This is not a feel-good Sunday. It's way, way more than that. This is truth. God, move us from fear to facts, to faith, to feet. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you one day face to face. Until then, Lord, find us faithful. Find us not giving into fear, but may our joy overcome that fear as we understand that Jesus is alive. In your name we pray. Amen. There is a song I know it well A melody that's never failed on mountains high, in valleys low, 
my soul will rest my confidence in you alone hope has a name his name is jesus my savior's cross has set the sinner free hope has a name his name is jesus oh christ be praised i have victory continue worshiping the Lord by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus, our risen, living Savior, with your people of all ages and races, we worship you as our Lord and God, who conquered sin, death, and the devil for sinners, for us. Accept our alleluias as we celebrate with believers, saints, and angels, because you, Lamb of God, shook the world, dying to forgive our sins. You shook the world, rising to give us eternal life, you live to hear our prayers and conquer every fear in this fearful world 
Fear not, I am with you. Jesus, help us to cling to these words and live in faith and boldness. You give us your Holy Spirit so that using our gifts, our resources, whatever we have, we can shake the world with the good news that Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord of mercy and love, during this time of national and international distress, we ask you to work mightily to curb the advance of this virus that has already attacked thousands. We thank you for those who have recovered, for those in danger, all of us, especially the aged, the weak, those in the front lines treating the sick. Lord, protect them, protect us. And while you protect us, help us to not give in to a spirit of fear and panic. Help the world to see that we serve a living Savior who loves us and who calls us to love our neighbors with generous, helping hearts and hands. Father, give our leaders in our cities, states, our nation, and the world great wisdom, courage, perseverance, and vision as they work hard to overcome something unprecedented in most of our lives. Father, rather than giving in to a spirit of criticism, Help us to do what you have commanded us in your word, to pray for our leaders and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Most of all, dear Father, use these trying times to draw all people to you through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.